Good morning, everybody. It is May the 28th. It is a rainy, cloudy, kind of stormy day here in Maryland. It's already a little bit humid, but that's okay uh, because uh, the joy of the Lord is my strength today. I've just been singing um, that song, I've Got Peace Like a River, and um, I looked up the uh, lyrics to it, and I didn't know, I knew I've got peace like a river, and then I knew I've got joy like a fountain, but I didn't know the part where it says, I've got love like an ocean, I've got love like an ocean. I love, I love that song, I like to sing that song. Uh, especially if I'm having kind of a quiet time or or if I need to kind of quiet myself uh, I sing that song I, I know it's a gospel song uh, but it's also a, a pretty popular uh, kids song for use in church and children's church and things like that and I, I don't know maybe some of you already know that song and, and I know it's uh, kind of early in the morning maybe for some of you to be singing, but um, I, I really like that song. Um, today's today's psalm is super sweet psalm. Uh, we're in Psalm 127 today, and, and we are continuing with the uh, song uh, Psalms of Ascent, the Songs of Ascent. Sally sent me the coolest uh, song and video yesterday. It's um, uh, she'll put it up there in a minute. It's Song of Ascents, and it's perfect for what we've been studying, but it's also just, it's awesome, awesome worship song, much, much deeper than what I was just singing, but um, um, you should, you guys should check that out, Sally. Um, Mauser is my sister, and I'm sure in a few minutes she'll put the name of that up there, and you can look that up on YouTube. All right, so... Uh, Psalm 127, it looks like everybody's ready to go. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your love, Lord. I thank you for your peace, which is like a river. I thank you for your love, which is like an ocean. I thank you for your joy, which is like a fountain. Father, today we do ask for peace and love and joy to reign in our lives, to reign, uh, to reign in the lives of our family members. Lord, I thank you for this beautiful rain that you're giving us today. But I pray, Lord, that you would keep the storms away, that you would keep uh, any damage away from the East Coast, the Carolinas. And Lord, I pray that you would bless us today and open our minds to revelation. In Christ's name, amen, amen, amen. All right, so let's get into this. So today, this is a song of ascents, and it is really thought that not David, but his son Solomon wrote this, uh, wrote this psalm. And we think it because uh, Solomon is the one, I just want to say David so bad, Solomon is the one who actually was allowed to build the temple. And Solomon was the one who was really uh, the builder in the family. David, uh, you know, was the great conquering king and great leader. But uh, Solomon built the temple and uh, many of the surrounding uh, beautiful places were built by Solomon. God allowed him to build those. And I think it's important that we remember that God allowed him to build those because David was not allowed. Uh, if you remember, David was not allowed to build the temple, but uh, Solomon, his son, was. And so Solomon is, is talking about two different things here. He's talking about literally building a building, literally building a house. Um, but he is also talking about the family unit because just like now, um, the family unit is our home. It is our, it is our life. It is what we, um, what we live for is our family and the parts of the family and how we establish our homes and how we establish uh, and build our, our lives. Our lives are also part of what he's talking about today. 
I think it's critical that we look at this through the eyes of Solomon because, let me just say this, Solomon, even though he had many, many wives and many, 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 many concubines, I don't get that, but he did, and um, I mean like hundreds, hundreds of people, uh, but he only had one child that is ever mentioned, that we only know of his one child, and and so Solomon is is writing this, and he's talking about a house, and so let's just jump right into it. I'm in Psalm 127. I said jump right into it. I've been talking about it for a few minutes now, but anyway, so Psalm 127, unless the Lord builds the house, its builders labor in vain, Psalm 127, 1 which really translate into, without the Lord, frustration. Without the Lord, dash, frustration. And as I was reading that, yesterday was kind of an insane day for me. It was all good stuff, but I was, I was just busy all, 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 all day. But I was reading this last night, and when I came across that, unless the Lord builds the house, it's builders labor in vain. And then when I found it, that that really translates to without the Lord, frustration. Without the Lord, frustration. Now this is, uh, again, he's talking about building a temple, building a house. But he's also talking about building our lives, building our families, building these things that are important to us, that are critical to us. And he's saying that unless you do it without the Lord, you're just going to get frustrated. You're just going to get frustrated. You see, unless the Lord is your builder or your architect or your contractor or your plumber or your electrician or your painter or your landscaper, unless he is all of those in the parts of your life, then it's going to be a frustration. It's going to be frustrating. It's going to be a season of, oh, wow, how did that all, how did that all get to be so off? How did that all get so wrong? How did, how did my life get on such a crazy track? Because you see, we want to, as humans, all of us, uh, we want to do these things in our own way, and we, we come up with a good idea, and we think, this is how I want to build my life, and, and this is how I want, um, you know, my life to look like. This is, you know, I am, I personally am a great planner, and, and, you know, I like to say, well, okay, this is what I want my calendar to look like today, and this is what I want it to look like tomorrow, and days like yesterday, while everything a part of it was good. It was a good day yesterday. But still, there were parts of it where I was like, oh, Lord, you know, uh, I, I got really frustrated because I kind of got ahead of myself and what I should have been doing and what I shouldn't have been doing yesterday. And I, didn't, I didn't go down, you know, and buy myself some liquor, but uh, I did some stuff yesterday that really I should have planned better. I should have sat back and said, you know, is that really using wisdom? Because I'm going to tell you something. Using wisdom is also letting God build your house. Because God gives us wisdom. God gives us abilities. God gives us skills. You know, in Exodus, uh, where it's talking about where they're starting to build that temple, and it said God sent those craftsmen in, those men who knew what they were doing, those men who were experts. When we got ready to build our church, uh, our new church, um, I mean, it's been there for a long, long time, but it's, it's not the church that we were in when we originally came up here. But when we got ready to build it, Steve had a vision of what he wanted it to look like. He hired my cousin, uh, Stephen Carroll, and his firm, and they, they drew out the plans. Uh, so in other words, we didn't just go over there and slap up a, a place that, you know, would have fallen down. A year later no you know they they used wisdom they used people who knew what they were doing they used men and women who knew what they were doing and then it says they labor in vain that doesn't mean that doesn't mean you shouldn't even don't even work don't even worry about it just just say okay Lord this year's this year's no it says he wants you 
He wants you to do work. We're supposed to work. We're supposed to be builders. We're supposed to build our families, not on shifting sand, but we're supposed to find that good, firm foundation of Jesus Christ. That's another good children's church song. And so um, when you're talking about this, I've got my Bible over here, which is why I keep looking that way. And, and so it says that unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchmen stand in guard, who are standing in guard. They're doing it in vain. Unless that, unless the Lord is the one watching over, unless the Lord is your shelter, unless the Lord is your insurance, unless the Lord is the one watching over and protecting, then the watchman is, is just staying there for nothing. Now, that also doesn't mean we're not supposed to be watchful. It doesn't mean we're supposed to say, I, I'm, I'm not even going to worry about it anymore. I, I don't have to oversee my staff. I don't have to oversee my family. I don't have to oversee anything that God's put into my hands. It does not mean that at all. If if I lived in this house, and I do, if but if I were to say, I don't have to do, I don't have to do any housework because the Lord gave us this house, and he did. It's a miracle. How we got this house is an absolute miracle. But now it's on us to keep it and to maintain it because this is also the Lord's house. I mean, this is the Lord's house. As you walk in my front door, I hope you feel the presence of the Lord in this house because we serve the Lord in this house. We worship in this house. We have communion in this house. We minister the gospel of Jesus Christ for the last three, almost three months, more than ever before comes out of this house. But that doesn't mean that I just sit there and say, well, God, I hope you've got a plan for keeping this place clean because uh, it can't be me because this is, it's in vain. No, that's foolish. God gives us these things. He gives us our classrooms. He gives us our homes. He gives us our churches. He gives us these things. And then he says, I'm going to watch over it. And if you'll commit that thing to me, I'm going to protect it. I'm going to watch over it. I'm going to build it. I'm going to keep building it. But man, I'm expecting you to do your part too. It says, <clears throat> in vain you rise up early and stay up late, toiling for food to eat. Now, this, again, is not saying to us, you don't have to get up early. I wish somebody would say that, and it would be the Lord, but it's not how that works. It says, but if you're just getting up early, and you're working all day, and you're working all night just to get enough to eat, you just, you're just saying, oh, I'm just going to work, I'm going to work, and I'm going to work. And this is saying, no, because that's in vain. You don't need to do that. You do need to work. You do need to provide for your family. That's everywhere in the Bible. But it also says, for he grants sleep to those he loves. Now, a lot of people think that where it says he grants sleep to those he loves, that Solomon is talking about himself personally. His name translates to beloved. And so, He's saying he grants sleep to those he loves. But what this is saying is you can lay down at night and sleep. You've, you've done what you were supposed to during the day. You've put things in order. You've built your life on Jesus Christ. You have made sure that your foundation is safe and it's protected and it's not got cracks in it where you've got doubt or you've got foolishness or you've got things in your life that have no business being in your life. But this is saying you've built your house on this firm foundation. You've worked how you should work. You've provided for your family. You've maintained your, uh, your home or your life. And then it says, then you can lay down at night and while you are asleep, he will provide for you. He will provide for you. Now, this isn't the story of the, the shoemaker and the elves. The, no, I'm not talking about that kind of provision. I'm talking about while you are sleeping, while you are resting. So you've, you've dedicated your whole day to the Lord. You've dedicated your life to the Lord. Everything is in his hands. You've put everything where it's in his province. And then you've, 
you've accepted what he has allotted to you and you're maintaining it. You're taking care of it. Then when you lay down at night, he's going to provide rest to you. Listen, so many times I will lay down at night and I'll sleep, but the next morning when I get up, I don't feel rested. I don't feel peaceful. I feel like I've tossed and turned uh, all night or I've or I've um, worked on a project all night or all these other things all night and I get up the next day and I just feel less rested than before. Here's, here's why, because when we lay down at night to sleep, we should put everything that is part of that day in his hands, in his hands. Now lay me down to sleep. Pray the Lord my soul to keep. Now, the rest of that is kind of theological mess. But this is how it should be. We lay down at night, and maybe we sing that song, I've got peace like a river. I've got love like an ocean. I've got joy like a fountain. When, when I, was sing, I was singing that this morning before I found out about the love like an ocean, and I was singing that this morning, and I was thinking about what we talked about yesterday, about the joy like a fountain part because yesterday we talked about Psalm 126 where it says laughter filled our mouths. Laughter filled our mouths. And when laughter fills our mouth, that means it's not, it's not, you know, just, you've heard people fake laugh. <laughs> That's not real. That's not real. But when joy bubbles out of you like a fountain, I mean, don't think of like a little bling, bling. I mean, think about a fountain, a fountain that's just gushing and, and maybe those fountains out in Las Vegas that do the, the water shows, you know, it's just beautiful, gorgeous fountains spewing up. Think about that. Because when you've got peace like a river, peace like a river, you know, it's just... Don't think of a raging river right now. Think of a calm river. We live out here on the Potomac. And sometimes it's just as smooth as glass. Or sometimes it's just little laps. Little laps. It's just so peaceful. It's so peaceful. So peaceful. If you've ever been on a cruise and you... You know, you're standing there and you're looking down on the water or you're looking out on the water. It's so peaceful. Peace like a river. That's what we're supposed, when we lay down to go to sleep, we need to be praying, just give me peace like a river. And now we're going to say, I've got, oh, I've got it. I've got love. I've got love like an ocean. There are no... There are no ends to the depths of the oceans. It's not even been discovered, all of the things, all of the glory of the ocean. It's so deep. It's so mammoth. It's beyond our comprehension. So this is saying, lay down. And while you're asleep, I'm going to provide for you. I'm going to provide that peace. I'm going to provide that love. I'm going to provide that joy. I'm going to go into your life and give you that rest. Because you've built your life on me. You've built yourself on me. You've built the foundation that needs to be. Your walls <clears throat> are enclosing my presence. That roof over you is my hedge of protection around you. And then it says, sons are a heritage from the Lord. Sons are a heritage from the Lord. Children are a reward from him. Now again, this is written by a man who had hundreds, hundreds of women that he was with. But he only we only know of one child, one offspring. And it says, sons are a heritage from the Lord, children a reward from him, like arrows in the hands of a warrior are sons born in one's youth. Blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. They will not be put to shame when they contend with their enemies at the gate. Now, let me tell you something I found out. The, the, the word, and again, I am an elementary education major, uh, so I don't 
know what Greek is, but ben, B-E-N, is the word for sun, sun. Bath, B-A-T-H, is the word for daughter. B-E-I-T-H, Beth, is a household or family. And so son, daughter, household or family, all of those have the same root word, which is bana, B-A-N-A-H, which is the word for to build, to build. So son, daughter, household, all have the same root word of to build, to build. When you build, when you build that family, then it says sons are a heritage. They're a reward. Stephen, I have two sons, and they are indeed a reward. We also have two daughters, totally a reward. Children are reward from him. Children are, sometimes maybe we don't feel that way, but our children are a reward from God. And like arrows in the quiver, so they are, they are there, they are our feeling of protection, they are our feeling of we can go into warfare, they are our feeling of we are mightily equipped, we are mightily equipped with that quiver of arrows that we carry, those are our children, those are our grandchildren. Those are our nieces and nephews. Our family, that is our quiver. That is our reward. Um, in the Walls family, that's my mom's side of the family. In the Walls family, <clears throat> there, are, uh, there, was, there was one boy co cousin, and he was the oldest, and then I'm next. And, and David was 11 years older than me. And so there was David, and then, uh, then there's me, and then there's uh, Teresa and Sally and Sherry and Janet and then Ainsley is our bonus cousin because Ainsley is the same age as my daughter Amy. So that's pretty awesome. So there's there's all these girls, just all these girls. And we're very close to each other, even though we live all over the place. Well, two of the cousins live in South Carolina. Um, and then Sally and Sherry are in Cleveland. Ainsley's in Chattanooga. And then I'm here. Uh, and like I say, David passed away several, several years ago. And um, and so all of us were on this text uh, pretty often, and uh, and we love it on each other on that text. But we also tease each other on that text. And uh, Sally uh, started us off this morning, and we've been texting back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And it's just a joy. It's a reward to be in touch with those cousins, because love built that foundation. And one of them said something about Nani. That's what we call her grandmother. Nani would have loved this or she would have loved that. I don't remember exactly what it was uh, that we were even talking about. But um, when Ainsley said, and Ainsley is watching, when Ainsley said, I wish I had known her. And I started to put back, but I needed to focus on what I was getting ready to do. I started to put back, but she knew you. She knew you. She knew that her baby, because my Uncle Mickey, Ainsley's daddy, just a little bit older than I was. Uh, and so when we look at that and we say, oh, she would have loved that. She would have loved that. Because my grandmother, my nanny, she loved her children, but she really, really, really loved her little grandchildren. I mean, she did. And she loved Mickey so much that I, she would have just eat Ainsley. Ainsley knew her for, I, I think, maybe a month after Ainsley was born is when our grandmother died. You see, the builder builds that family. The builder builds that family. And then he gives us these rewards of our children. And when you say, blessed is the man whose quiver is full, I mean, we look at these families uh, Steve's got a cousin and he has six children and they're expecting twins. And my first response was, oh my gosh, eight children. They're going to have to buy a bus. I mean, seriously, they're going to have to buy a bus. And then I looked at those children and how they line them up and how well they're cared for and how loved they are and how excited they were that they've got twins coming. And I think they're twin boys. And, and then I think, what a reward. What a great reward. They've definitely built, he's a pastor, she's a pastor. They've definitely built their house. They've built their family on the Lord. And now they have this great reward. And so when people come against you, 
You, what can they say? I, what can your enemies say? Because you're in your house. You're in this house that you've built. You're in this family that you've built. And so if your enemies come against you, all you can say is, I'm, I'm sorry. I have this great family. And because I've got this great family, they surround me. If you've ever been in this bad situation and your family just, boom, they're there. They just surround you. Uh, a couple of weeks ago is when my friend Karen died. And the morning of the funeral, I was walking out to the car, and the mailman came literally running up the driveway. I was getting in the car to go to the funeral, and he had a box for me. And he said, no, I, you know, I needed to put this in your hands first thing this morning. And so I, I thanked him, and I opened it up. It was a huge box of biscottis from Sally and Sherry. I mean, just my family surrounds me. And honestly, when you have a family or when you have people who love you, who surround you because it's built on Jesus Christ, all of those cousins that I mentioned before, all Christians, all serving the Lord, all have families who are serving the Lord. And they're, and they're all the sweetest, best people. But they've built their lives on Jesus Christ, as have Steve and I, as have Sally and Sherry. And when you build your life on Jesus Christ, then the enemies, all they can do is, I think a couple of, um, oh, in 126, where it says, the nation's looking at us saying, look what the Lord has done for them. Look what the Lord has done for them. And then it says, look at, look at this. God, God, we, we don't know what to do with them. It says our enemies are just confused and they're confounded. When you have a quiver full of family, when you have a quiver full of family, and I'm going to tell you something. I've been talking about biological family. But our church family has been that for us. Steve and I have been here almost 40 years ministering in this same area, in this same church, with a lot of the same people. We've, we've got a lot of new people, too. But Steve was talking yesterday. He said, that's, you know, that's our family, too. That is our family, too. I mean, I love them. These people that I went to school with back in Cleveland, I love them. And this has given us the opportunity to once again bring back family into, into all of us who are together. I mean, Steve was talking about Sharon Smith's mom the other day and how much he loved that family. And, it, and Sharon's dad was Steve's Boy Scout. Uh, uh, maybe his mom, maybe her mom was the den mother. I'm not sure how that works, but... Um, it was anyway, we was talking about our clothes and then Sharon and I were best friends growing up and I was like, you know, I get to be with Sharon every day through Bible study. You see, when you allow the Lord to be the builder of your home, when you allow him to hold on to your family, when we allow God to come into our lives and completely be in control, you see, we have to trust him. We have to trust him because sometimes you come into, uh, you know, into situations and you say, I, I'm not sure how you're doing that, God. I'm not sure how that's going to work. I'm not sure what's happening in my life right now. But then if you follow that with, I trust you, but I trust you. You know, when you say, but, when you say, but, that means everything that was before the but kind of goes away. So if I say, I've got, I've got some situations in my life and I'm, I'm putting them in your hands, but, but I trust you. But I trust you. I trust you with all my heart. I trust you with everything that is within me. I trust you during this situation that we're in right now. I don't understand it, but I trust you. I trust you. Today looks like it's going to be a stormy day here on Mid-Atlantic. I was sitting there watching the weather a little bit earlier, and honestly, it's like, um, I think Jim Cantore was doing it. And I, it's almost like he said, I mean, they so pinpointed the heavy rain that it was like over Stephen Jan's house. I was like, <coughs> doesn't it kind of look like they've got a picture of our house just sitting right there on their, on their screen? Oh, it's going to gonna really rain today at Stephen Jen's house and then more coming so um 
you know, I think it's going to rain today. But I'm not going to let that, I'm not going to let that get me down. I'm not going to be depressed. I'm not going to be sad because it's raining. And I'm sure not going to be sad or depressed over anything that's going on in my life right now. Because I've built my house on the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, um, I, let's see if I can think of the words. The wise man built his house upon the rock. The wise man built his house upon the rock. Of course, the opposite of that is the foolish man built his house upon the sand. The foolish man built his house upon the sand. The foolish man built his house upon the sand. The foolish man uh, built his house upon the sand. And the rains came tumbling down. I don't know why rain came tumbling, but it does. The rains came down and the floods came up. The rains came down. And the foolish man's house went... <laughs> But the wise man built his house on the Lord Jesus Christ. So build your house on the Lord Jesus Christ. So build your house on the Lord Jesus Christ. Do it. Then no matter what comes your way, no matter what happens, it stands firm. It stands firm. The floods may come. The storms may come. But if you build your house, if you root your family in the Lord Jesus Christ, then whatever comes in your house will stand strong. Father, today, I pray that you are the architect of all of our dreams. I pray that you are the builder of all of our plans. Lord, I pray that today that you would enter into all of our minds, all of our spirits, and that you would give us peace like a river, love like an ocean, and joy like a fountain. That as we continue to build our lives, that we would do so on you. Because indeed, you are our refuge. You are our rock. You are where it is stable for us to stand. I pray today for all of our families, for all of our sons, all of our daughters, all of our spiritual sons and daughters, all of our grandchildren and great-grandchildren, everybody who is a part of our biological family. But, Lord, I also thank you for our spiritual family. Lord, I thank you that you've put so many wonderful men and women into our lives in the last 40 years that we have been worshiping God with you, living our lives with those people under your umbrella, under your protection, under your anointing. I thank you for old friends, and I thank you for new friends. I thank you for the family of God. In Jesus' name we all pray. Amen. 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 I love you guys so much. Uh, I'm not sure if Sally put that. Um, if Sally put the name of that song up. But uh, if she didn't, then we'll see if she'll post it later. It is literally called like the Song of Ascents. Psalm of Ascents. The Ascent Song. <laughs> I don't know what it's called. But anyway, it's perfect. For what we're studying right now and now that you've all got these couple of songs in your head that my little singing did so be blessed i love you i love all of these names coming up saying amen all right praise god see you tomorrow